Annyeong haseyo. Welcome to Afternoon of Delight, where Leah, Megan, and Amy, romance novelists and your K-Romance guides. So grab some deck bokey and listen to your new favorite unease. Hello, Allison. Hello. <laughs> so we're here for another fun BL roundup. Yeah. And yeah. Today we've got two that we're going to talk about. So history three trapped and the candy color paradox. Yeah. So, two very different BLs. <laughs> yes. And one is a Taiwanese BL. Uh, mm-hmm. Retrapped, and then the candy color paradox is a JBL, a Japanese uh, BL. Yeah. So I first pitched history trapped too because I think you would, I think you would love it. I still think you would love it. <laughs> but it's a uh, like you said, it's Taiwanese BL, which we haven't talked about before, and all BLs have a different flavor. And I think it's sort of fun to see the the countries and how they have just different BL culture and their production and everything is just slightly different but this one is about a mafia boss and a cop and then love and that's really all I needed to start watching it and I told you about it and you were like absolutely that sounds great and then you started it and did not love it this is true (laughs) So where did it, where did it steer off course for you? What happened? Okay. So here's the thing with this one, because things go off course for me for a variety of reasons, but this is a unique one. And that's why like, I'm on the fence with it still, which is the setup for it is a mafia boss and a cop. Honestly, I should like that. Like I do like kind of like the like you know one person being kind of like the on the straight and narrow the other person kind of you know finding the law more as like you know something that's more gray and to be interpreted um so that is one thing that i should like uh it's kind of like grumpy you know sundere and sunshine i should like that um you know, they're at one, I mean, I got like three episodes in at one point they were handcuffed together, which felt like, you know, Ken Porsche had that too. I like all of that kind of stuff. So there was like no really great reason for me to be like, eh, except for, and this is what feels very like personal. <laughs> and so I almost feel bad about it is I just wasn't connecting with the actors. So it wasn't mm. the story or the characters, it was the actors. And that makes me feel kind of squeaky because I'm like they're just living their best lives like they didn't like put me off I just wasn't like feeling it with them and so has that ever happened to you where you're watching something and it's working out oh like you're like the story is fine the characters are fine I just don't love these actors or actresses I think now that you say that I was just trying to watch um Mysterious Lover a street C drama on Vicky and I got like halfway through and I just couldn't like one, I didn't care anymore. Um, Two, I didn't love the actors. Uh, I like the actress a lot, but the actor just didn't work for me for whatever reason. And I think that's where my investment in the show started going down. And so then I just dropped it because I don't want to invest any more time in a show that doesn't capture my attention right from the beginning. But yeah, so I, that has definitely happened. Not in the BL world. There's been BLs I've dropped because I didn't like the storyline or something like that. But it was never, it was never personal <laughs> against the actor. Yeah, I mean, like it wasn't. There was, I wasn't like I hate them. It's just that <laughs> as I started watching it, I just was like not really feeling this dynamic for some reason. And like I felt bad because I had like no real great reason. Like it wasn't like one of them did something like egregious. So I just didn't want to be like, I don't like your, I mean, it wasn't like I thought they were like unattractive. It was just like, there was not like, I just, there was something. And that's why I'm like, maybe it was just that week. And I am curious to try it again, but there was just something about the two of them where I was like, I'm just not feeling it. And so I jumped ship and that is something that is, I think that's the first time 
I've done it just because I don't love the I don't love the person playing the role. And I, I mean, I, and I feel like very, like, I mean, there's other times I have had that happen a little bit. Um, and I, I mean, I'm almost hesitant to get into it because I'm just afraid I'm going to get like so much hate where they're like, <laughs> you don't like not resonate with the actor. So I'm just going to put it out there because like hard choices are hard. I'm doing a podcast. I should be able to own my thing. Again, I, some people probably just don't like me and that's fine. I'm sure there's people who are like, you know, they listen to the podcast. So like, I love to hear other people talk when we talks. So it's just like, it's, we don't vibe. So somebody who is not in BL, but I just don't seem to ever um, vibe with that much is Song Joo Ki. Like mm. I've never super vibed. Like I tried Vincenzo. I tried Reborn Rich. I slogged through Descendants of the Sun, which was a slog for me. And I liked the second characters in it quite a bit. But that this actor just never has really clicked for me in a way. And, I, and it's a beloved actor with a huge fan base. And so I'm like, I am not saying like there's a specific reason that makes sense. It's just it has never been a fit for me. Yeah, that makes sense. Which actor was it, the cop or the mafia boss? Ooh. Both. But maybe it was just like them together and the way the moon was aligned. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like if I had to pick the mafia boss. Really? Okay. But for no, like, and this is why I'm trying to unpack it because it's interesting is like, what is it about people where sometimes you have chemistry and sometimes yeah. you don't, or sometimes you're like, I have no chemistry or not, but I'm just feeling okay enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you don't have to owe it. You don't owe us any explanation. You can just not like or like whatever dramas, but know, it is but interesting. I like, to, I like to critique things for myself of like, why or why not? Like, of course, yes, I don't have to like whatever, but I want to be able to justify why. And so it's curious to me when I'm like, I don't have a very good reason why, except for the fact that I'm just not feeling these people. And then that's like, well, why? Like they haven't done anything to you. And it's not like I had like an angry feel. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I was just like, like, I'm just not interested. I'm just not that into you. <laughs> I'm just not, it's, and it's, yeah. And I mean, I'm sure it's me, not you. And I'm sure it's you, not me. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so has that well, ever happened to you like even in like you know more like a cis het drama space that c drama that i just mentioned i just didn't like the act like there was just nothing that compelled me to keep watching like him play that character i just didn't didn't love it but i don't there's been mass storylines but nothing where i'm like no i don't like the actor I guess I just, if I knew that from the beginning, I wouldn't go into the drama, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's where I've kind of decided to let that, you know, yeah. like, I'm like, maybe I just let Song Joon Ki sail for me. Yeah. Um, I tried to watch, you'll appreciate this, I guess. I tried to watch Reborn Rich because, well, first I love the villain in it. And um, also because like Suga raved about it and, you know, we're both Suga BTS biases. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then I started, I'm like, Oh, like it, it's got me again like I'm just not in it <laughs> it happens to me a lot more I will say with um western actors where oh. not vibe on people all the time um but I feel like the tropeness of a lot of Asian dramas kind of like I feel like the tropes work so well for me that I'm usually pulled in anyway. I think that's what it is. I don't think it's like a reason that I'm like oh I'm gonna give like a pass to like an Asian actor I think I'm just probably more in an entertained space and less like critiquey in general yeah um, and I'm usually usually a good tropey story outweighs to me like the character like the person playing the character if that makes sense yeah yeah that is there's because the C drama that I was mysterious lover like it had all the right tropes for me I was like watching the trailer and I was like I love this I love this I love this and then I got into it and I just couldn't like the tropes weren't enough to keep me going with that one um, I think that like for Western actors, like I won't watch anything with Tom Cruise. I don't, <laughs> I don't vibe. <laughs> Fair. And, but I mean like, okay, so here's the thing with that. It's like these characters in this drama were not Tom Cruise. Like, right. Cruise they were a long They're track lovely. record of problematic. Like these people were just living their lives. 
<laughs> so again, I want to be very careful in who I'm coming after because like it's very much just like a personal thing of and i'm just curious like in the world if that ever hits this was very unusual for me to hit normally i can be like it's this with the story it's that with the story and this i found that i was like kind of just like half not caring if like there was like vibing happening i'm like oh this is really weird like i'm just so uninvested in these two people but everything around it is all the kind of stuff that would sell me on a drama normally what did you think of the secondary characters like the friend groups and stuff. I didn't get that far. I got enough that they were like kind of coming online. I was like three episodes in when I was pulled the plug. So it wasn't like I like spent, it wasn't like I was all in. There was like, you know, some like set, I was still in the setup, I feel like to like the two guys or whatever that were like, uh -huh. yeah. So, so yeah, I don't make, so I mean, what I can do, cause these are not long, long stories is, you know, I can, go back and try it mm -hmm. and see what that means you know what I mean like I could go back and try it and then be like hey now that I've gotten to the end like here's a really good example so my daughter does junior lifeguards which is a program that happens on the California coast she dislikes it so today when I picked her up from guards she was like remember I don't want to do it next year and I was like next year is really far in advance and she's like no no you promised I'm like I've never promised you don't have to do it again let's just be in the moment and she was like I can't believe this I'm running away from home like I'm going to pack all my things and leave because you know you can't keep your word blah 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 she was like in big feelings and I was just trying to be like and then her brother was like, you know, I felt the same way. And then I realized that I really liked it. And like, when I would get to the end of a session, I would be like, I didn't dislike it as much as I thought. And now I really like it. And in fact, I'd even like to be a lifeguard maybe. And so maybe this will happen to me. Maybe I'm like, oh, I want to run away from home and not watch this. And then I will. And I'll be like, oh, I actually like it so much. I only want to watch Taiwanese. I wonder what would happen if you started at like episode six or something and just jumped a little bit of the middle like yeah I don't know so I mean why don't I do this and then do a short addendum to the pod to be like and here's what happened once I like like did it still just not work for me or did I like have a moment where I was like you know what it's fine yeah okay I mean I'm anxious to see how that experiment goes what was your take on the like Taiwanese flavor of BL like how did it differ for you just in those few episodes then like yeah, a tie here's what's funny the only thing that really jumped out at me and I've thought about the sense but I haven't done was I was really struck with how beautiful the setting was that they were in like when they were on the run I was like look at this forest look at these ferns this is lovely I was like maybe I want to go to Taiwan it looks beautiful and so I think that was the only thing that really jumped out at me was I was like I need to think more about uh Taiwan in general because it looks like a beautiful place yeah they about for you um for me the because I've only I've watched a few Taiwanese and I've watched most of the histories because there's like, I think they're up to five now. Um, and they, they feel a little bit lower production, but not lower quality. Um, and they're often just like slightly on the edge of bananas where there's just some crazy plot lines that happen. Um, but the acting I find is always pretty good and they have great like chemistry between the actors um and they have good kisses which i think is important like they, they do good smooches in the taiwanese bls um but the histories particularly are just like a little a little bit bananas but fun and you just kind of go along with them so and i find that i can sort of adjust or ignore the the lower production looking quality because the other stuff pulls through. Got you. So one thing that's funny though is that you mentioned like the bananas thing is um, I was just watching a little bit of Not You Yesterday, which is the uh, Thai BL that we all really like. And oh, not me. Not, not me. Sorry, not me. Not Yeah. Yeah, not not you, not me. The off gun. <laughs> um, but my daughter was watching it, and so I like started watching a little bit of it. And I was thinking, man, this is a wild drama. 
And I yeah. love, I loved how wild it is. <laughs> oh, I love that. Drive. That's my, that's one of my comps for this. So if you can't, like if somebody who's listening starts watching history three trapped and just can't get into it, which is valid, a good comp would be, I think not me or the K BL movie long time no see that's on Gaga. Those are, I don't know, they're pretty good okay. comps for that. Nice. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, okay, I will try it. I mean, I have nothing to lose and I'll see how I feel. It was just like, I felt very fine walking away from it. And what I walked away from, and here's what's interesting, was like became to me... I had like a spark and then it became like the most meh for me. So can we talk about this drama? Yeah. So you went to Candy Color Paradox, the JBL on Vicky after starting to watch this one. What made you choose that one out of all the BLs that are out there? You know, I decided to do something. So my co-host in Afternoon Delight is um, Megan. And she said that sometimes she just like, pick something and goes for it. And, um, and I was like, you know what, I will do that. Like, I'm just going to grab something. I'm not going to do a lot of research. And for some, I don't know, there must've just been something like pretty about like the, I don't know. I just, I, maybe it was like the word candy. And I was like, I like candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I just kind of like jumped for it and went in and, um, and so, yeah, I did. <laughs> and I knew very, very little about it. How about you? How did you pick it? Uh, I, th- I think that was because sometimes I'll wait till the BL is all the way out and then I'll watch it. And then sometimes I will watch it weekly. And that came out last year. Um and I think it was one that I waited for it to come all out because most of the time I'm on the fence about JBLs. They're not ones that I want to pick up right away just because um, I don't always love them. And then my friend recommended, she's like, I think you'd really like this one. And she was had just finished Candy Color Paradox. So then I binged it and I really enjoyed it. It's a fun, short BL it's enemies to lovers, workplace romance, like has a lot of great things about it, but it's not one that I go back to and rewatch, um, which in my world means if I'm not rewatching it, it wasn't like, didn't make a lasting impression on me because my favorites, I will go back and rewatch pretty regularly. So yeah. again, can, sort of middling. You watch everything kind of, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I rewatch all the time. I don't think there's been a week that has gone by since uh, Love in the Air came out that I haven't rewatched at least Pie and Sky storyline. I re- rewatch things a lot. So did you, do you just rewatch like scenes or do you go back and do the whole thing? Mm, most of the time it's just scenes or I'll fast forward through storylines. So like for Tharn type, I don't watch any of the secondary storylines except for Techno in season one, because he's my favorite character. So I always watch the stuff with him, okay. but the other storyline, I don't even like, I just fast forward through all of that. Some of them, like this time when I was preparing for the episode, I rewatched history trapped like all the way through but it had been a while since I had rewatched it. So I was like getting to know the characters again. Um, but most of the time I'm fast forwarding through quite a bit. It doesn't take me very long to rewatch. Okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. So what was meh about it for you? <laughs> and look, I'd like to bring joy into the world. So for this <laughs> one, I didn't dislike the characters. Um, I didn't like, dislike the actors. I mean, um, like I didn't have like a visceral, like, oh my gosh, I can't handle the actors. Like I was like, they're cute. They're fine. Like I didn't have something that like, just like put me off for no explainable reason. And in the first episode or so the premise got me enough, like 
I enjoyed the idea of it's essentially like a photographer and a reporter that get like put on the case to do stakeout for kind of like a tabloidy magazine. And the premise is then that gives us like forced proximity, opposites attract, you know, all the things that I like generally am like going to find relatively entertaining. So I just did a podcast, Extraordinary You. I don't know if this will be out or not when this releases. If not, it'll be coming out very soon. Um, Like it comes out on June uh, 28th. Mm. And it's, um, we talked a little bit about a saggy middle. And so mm. me, like this had like a premise. Like I felt like they came together with like, here's our setup. And that that's what I told you. Like we're going to have the reporter. We're going to have the photographer. We're going to have them on stakeouts. We're going to have opposite of tracks, forced proximity. And I'm good, good, good. And then I feel like as they started to do it, they're like, I don't really know what I want to do. Like, I felt like the whole show was like a saggy middle. Whereas mm-hmm. the middle is usually like when they don't know what to do with conflict. So they'll have like kind of like dumb misunderstandings or kind of like meandering side plots. And that's what this felt like to me. I was like, I don't know what the point of this drama is. <laughs> and like we had like the different stakeouts but they didn't like feel very thematically connected. I didn't feel like we had a lot of like character growth in it. It felt like just like stuff happened and that was it. And then it was over. (laughs) And I was like, okay. I mean, it wasn't the worst. I didn't like die watching it, but I was like, when it was over, I was like, I'm glad this is over. Like I'm done. Like good day to you show. (laughs) Yeah. I agree with all that. And I think that like, perfectly captures why I don't love JBL because that's how I feel about most JBLs that I watch like I just don't (gasps) see I've always really liked them I know I know and there's some like well and now I say that and I have to take it back because I just watched our dining table um and that one just ended last week or the week before and that one was fantastic probably one of my top five dramas um it didn't have a saggy middle like it was great all the way through but I just JBLs lose me and then I yeah they're not they're not my favorite I watch all of them because I want to (laughs) and I mean here's the thing that's interesting to me and like uh the candy what is I always want to call it candy crush the candy color paradox. (laughs) candy color paradox is and I still don't know what a candy color paradox is (laughs) yeah why why was that we don't know um is I am a lot more forgiving of quiet dramas and like a bigger focus on like an internal arc. So for example, like old fashioned cupcake does not have like a riveting external plot. And that's another JBL that I really liked. Um, So is it like a fast moving plot where lots of stuff is going on? Absolutely not. But did I feel like I really was enjoying like the character study of these people moving through their lives and their feelings? Yes. So Candy Color Paradox, I could have been okay, honestly, if there'd just been even like a single stakeout that they were returning to over and over. Like I just, I wouldn't, I didn't need there to be a lot going on. I think I really just wanted to see the characters grounded in some sort of story that made me care about them. Mm -hmm. And instead, I felt like we got like some push pull that was just to push pull because they're like, we need drama in the story, not because like this feels very like intentionally grounded in like real character not I mean all characters are fake but we like to pretend they're real people so we can like dig in and like invest and these just always felt like they were kind of caricatures of and the stakes never felt very high to me yeah yeah and they like I always have a problem with a drama where I'm just like internally screaming use your words yeah and there's no reason why they're not like I'm okay if I'm yelling use your words and I understand the why behind it like in jacko frost it's like okay like oppression or there's trauma or whatever yeah right like i may i may not agree with it but you at least gave me some information as to why the actors or why the characters aren't doing this but there was no there wasn't a compelling enough reason for them not to be using their words (laughs) like the the character was literally a journalist who writes every day (laughs) like he should have been able to like put something into into his being and speak you know a little bit of his truth and he couldn't do the the other main so yeah it's frustrating yeah absolutely but worth it for episode eight 
I like the I like the sweet ending they gave us on that one. Yeah, see, and I was trying to hype for it. Like I was like, you know, you like the last episode. I was like, by the last episode, I was like, I don't care. Like I literally <laughs> don't care. Like goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that you're real. I don't believe your relationship's real. I think you're all going to go back into like the box somewhere and that's going to be it. And you know what? That's okay. I've come across characters like that. I've written characters like where sometimes like you just have a good idea and it doesn't execute. Mm -hmm. And this is what that felt like to me was I felt like we had a reasonably good premise. I feel like the, and I feel like the character, the actors did, this is where I guess I hold accountability to the writers to some degree is I feel like the cast did like what they could. I mean, they didn't like blow my brain back, but I felt like they did well with what they had to do. But basically mm-hmm. one that was just constantly like earnest and puppy dog and slightly pouting. And we had one that was always just a little bit like cool and mysterious and like when he like decided to like make a move, like I was always like, oh, that was like a random, like it never felt like it made sense. Like, you know, like when, like when the one decides to like make a move on the other finally and like kiss him in a hallway and then like move on. It was like, well, what? Like what happened? Like I like my romance to make sense and I like there to be an escalation. And if there's going to be a surprise, like, oh, like something happened out of the blue, I want to feel like it made sense at some point to like the overall point of the story. Instead, it felt like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to throw in a kiss. Then I'm going to have them be like, I don't know what to do about it. And then I'm not going to talk about it for two more episodes, but I'm going to feel upset or worried or confused. And that will give me conflict to keep the story going. And it just doesn't, it wasn't enough in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because the external story, like the vignettes that they were of the people they were interviewing, they were always weird. <laughs> like they didn't, and like some of them felt very heavy for the lightness we tread. Like they all felt like they were very heavy stories, and then we would just like bounce through them. Like well, onto like like one was like sold into prostitution because she wanted to make it as an actress. And she's like, I just want my story to be told. We're like, okay, thank you. Next, next trauma story. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, I felt like you could have taken just that story of alone, of like an actress who was, and then like, I guess I tried to appreciate the fact they were trying to give nuance, like the actor colleague who sold her into like the prostitution, basically got her like co-opted into the prostitution ring was really doing it because the guy who was running the prostitution ring had been like the man he'd always loved, but had never confessed to. And I was like, there's a lot going on here for us to shoehorn this into like one quickie conversation between characters and then move on. Yeah. And didn't that storyline last like, one and a half episodes one and a half episodes (laughs) and the drama is eight episodes long and that took up like a tiny little sliver and then there were other storylines that and we're not talking about like an episode that was like 65 minutes to unpack it was like a 25 minute episode and so I mean I was just like you know slow it down have the one story and then have growth that would have been if I could like give notes on the writing that's what I would say yeah yeah valid (laughs) I like all of those edits. <laughs> Who do we take them to? <laughs> Who do we take them to? But it helps. I mean, I guess I just take it back to myself as a memory of when I try to write things or plot things of what to try to do or not mm-hmm. to do. And what's mm-hmm. funny is I think I come for plot a little bit harder lately because um, I've talked about it in other areas of the pod. But, you know, if you're catching this, I do write. And I tend to write, like lately I've been doing like a book a year, usually ghost written, but I have um, a business where the central part of the business is it's a book packaging company. So com- um, publishing companies come to us and they are basically like, I want a book on, let's say, vampire, werewolf, motorcyclist. I think this is the example I always use. They don't actually come with that, but I wish somebody did. And, you know, and and, and make it Christmas. <laughs> that's the book I wish I had and no one's sending it to me doesn't JD oh, Rob have a few of those <laughs> maybe but she could have Christmas onto it <laughs> um and so then what happens is layered onto that becomes um like yeah so then I basically plot out like a detailed chapter outline so mm-hmm. you kind of know what the framework of the story is and then we give it to a very talented author that we'll subcontract with to produce the book um So basically, is it like fully painting by number? No, like every author who's like talented can bring a story to life. And, and I argue it's still very much 
part of the creative process because how do you think most shows are written that you watch? It's in a writing room where people are working together collaboratively. And so, you know, there's there's a good business case for why. I don't think every book needs to be created this way, but I think, you know, our company model makes sense. But it means that I'm much more in structure than I feel like um, I might otherwise be if I was like in the weeds with writing all the time. So I have like sympathy towards how it can, like you can lose your way or get stuck in these saggy middles. But I also tend to look at structure pretty critically a lot of the time and be like, you know, this is where you made a choice that put you in a hole and we wasted a lot of time over here that we didn't need to and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. How about other like met dramas that you're like, okay, I'm just gonna... I'm just going to get through this. (laughs) Yeah. I'm thinking of what are some of the ones that, I mean, like, this is where I feel bad because I, I mean, do I, should I feel bad? Look, I'm not saying that you can't like people can't like things. Right. Um, So I'm going to just pull out some of the ones that I feel like just didn't really like capture my heart and soul. Um, So one that I wanted to like a lot better than I did is um, cutie pie. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I liked Cutie Pie okay. Um, I liked it better than Candy Color Paradox. But what I think is fun about it is it had a forced engagement, like forced marriage in a BL, which is like ludicrous because like marriage isn't even like legal in Thailand. But like, who cares? Like, don't let that get in the way of a good trope. (laughs) So I enjoy that. I enjoy that, um, you know one likes the other and so like they're forced into it and one's like yay and the other one's like meh and so that's always like a good setup and and then you things go awry and one starts to catch like be like maybe I maybe I should have thought about this differently and like starts to catch feelings so the premise is fun the characters I thought the actors were really charming and cute and fun but again, I felt like the story just didn't fully ever know totally what it was doing. And so I felt like I just was like lost in like the week. Like it just made me lose interest in caring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the only other BL that I have like dropped, dropped was um, Color Rush 2. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever finish? Did you finish it? I think I maybe watched the first like five minutes of the second season. I was like, nope, I don't do second seasons. And this is why I just couldn't connect to it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm bitter because I love Color Rush 1 for all the plot holes and crazy. Um, And they had a problem. I think probably the actor didn't want to come back. Like one of the leads didn't want to come back. So they had to figure out what to do. And so when you start again, like this couple you've invested in, not to spoil it, but thing like, basically one of them is still there and then you realize oh like what's what's going on like where is that guy and then they kind of explain like oh it's not going to be about him it's going to be about this other guy and I was like yeah I'm out like I'm (laughs) I was only here for like the couple I was invested in originally yeah Yeah. I was like that with uh the eclipse and I've talked about this before but that was a drama the BL that came out last year that everybody loved like according to my Instagram account that was a very beloved BL and I was just like the whole time I was watching it I was like what am I doing this for I don't care about the storyline I was watching it for the main like couple because I love both of those actors and I do think they have good chemistry um but it was trying to sort of do the work and like make a statement and it just fell completely flat for me in the complete opposite way of like what totally worked and not me where they were equally trying to use their platform to like make some statements and to you know have voices be heard and in not me it worked really well and for me in the eclipse it just it didn't work and there is some stuff that I won't spoil that just like left a bad taste in the in my mouth for the drama and so that when I got to the end I was like well that was a waste of 12 hours or however many episodes it was and then the KBL all the liquors um that came out either the first part of this year or the end of last year um was just sort of meh like same thing what is moving this story forward why do I care about these characters and I think they just sort of had 
so so chemistry even though i like both of the male leads as actors i don't they didn't sell it to me in their chemistry so um is there i'm trying to think of like what else to like think about because i mean like yeah the stuff with like meh stuff happening it is interesting for me i'd say that most of the time i'm going into a most of the time I'm going into any drama because the setup in some way interests me. So I either really like the premise or I've been given such a glowing endorsement by somebody being like, being like, you must watch this that I'll, and they've sold it to me really well that I'll jump in. But a lot of times I'll just be like, this premise just hit me in like the right vibe for what I'm looking for at this moment. Um, And something I just realized that like I could do a lot more of that doesn't feel meh to me at all is uh I would love to see more historicals I wish oh. that there was a lot more historical BLs because I feel like there's a lot of tropes in there that we could play around with um like I love any kind of gender fluidity like where people are hiding genders like that's always and I feel like historical lends itself to that and I haven't really seen BLs play in that space much um I think that we've seen like quite a few like cishet romances where not quite a few but a few where we might have like the gay panic conceit which I don't totally love but sometimes can make for like some interesting tension like coffee prince I think handles it pretty well Mm -hmm. it stumbles right out of the gate but I feel like it got there with some nuance and king's affection I liked quite a bit with that um, but I, I would like to see some of that with BL. I think that would feel ne- not meh. <laughs> There's, um, there is a KBL that's a historical, something about taint, un- something paint. Like, I'll look it up and I'll send it to you. Um, but it's really good. I really enjoyed it. And that's full historical BL. And then there's um, the classic, The Untamed, which is a CBL. Are you thinking uh, which- with you? Yes. Okay, just looked it up. Tinted with you. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's it. I just saw that a long time ago. Okay, I'm going to add that to my list. And I think that one is really short. I think there's some time travel. I really enjoyed it. It was yeah, a it's fun a time slip fantasy between um a uh it's a fantasy romance about somebody who's in danger of death within a painting. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, no. Okay. A feudal past. We have a deposed crown prince who's forced into lonely exile. Um, oh, and then in modern times, we have a high school student who loves paintings. And as he is completing a mysterious painting, he's drawn back in time. Hmm. I'm into it. I'm going to... Uh, download this to my watch list right now and start it because this looks awesome so it's got some yeah. fantasy. But i was gonna say i feel like it, we could play with some fantasy elements and here you go you give me a historical that plays with fantasy so we will be coming back to you with a hot take on tinted with you which um yeah it looks good and it looks yeah it looks very short actually yeah i think i binged that one in one night and then maybe if <laughs> If we ever wanted to conquer the untamed, which is a very, very beloved CBL, very beloved. It's a Those... CBL. I didn't even know that they had a lot any CBL romance. Okay, um, but the the books that it's based on, I think, are pretty. I just finished the first in the five book series a couple weeks ago. Because okay. I was like, okay, if I can't watch it, then I'll read it because I'll be able to finish the book. And the book is proving to be very entertaining and I really like it, but I couldn't get through the drama. So maybe if we did it for the pot, I could, I could see it through. So. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, And I think that one's on Vicky and the other site. So. Um, Okay. Well, let's, I think I like to do more roundups that are, exciting and bring joy i will go back and check out uh history three trapped and see if i can get it to turn the corner for me and i'm gonna say candy color paradox meh it's short enough that if you're intrigued you should check it out yeah i mean 
All no of it's probably going to be, it's eight episodes, about 25 minutes long each. Yeah. And I will say, like I said at the very beginning, History Through Trapped is probably in my top five. I love that drama a whole lot. Like, yeah, and this is where, again, I want to be clear, because I don't want to be like, you love this drama. I don't like it all, especially because I don't have any, like, like it was funny when um, Alice and I were talking about it. She's like, so is it like the characters you don't like? I'm like, no. She's like, so it's like grumpy sunshine. There's some dairy. I'm like, yeah, I like all that. She's like, so you don't like, like, the plot I'm like no the plot seems fine like the plot's all like it felt very it, it felt much less wild but there was like a Kim Porsche element like the part that I got to felt very much like when Kim Porsche are like running from like everyone handcuffed together I was like this feels very much like that and I enjoy that fight and I mean like you're handcuffed together you're opposites this is going to give good conflict yeah yeah it's like, so yeah. good yeah but it was just like you know when they would be like tripping and catching each other and all that kind of stuff I was just like eh, okay and I was <laughs> weird like I'm having a weird reaction <laughs> so I want I want whoever is listening to this to watch it and give it a try because you'll probably I, like it I think it's just yeah do watch it do there's so much to so much to love about it so much to love just like I love Grumpy Sunshine, I love Sunshine Protector. I yeah, I love sick scenes, sick scenes like hospital scenes. There's three of them, so it's like the best, the best drama. Okay, give me your. This is a hard one to do on the spot. Give me your top three BLs. Oh, top you don't have three. to give them in order. You don't have to give them in order. Okay, top three BLs. Love mechanics. Always going to be you know more. Um, Long Time No See, which is a KBL movie, and Blooming, okay. which I is... Seen, well, I've seen the first one. I've seen Love Mechanics. Okay. Yeah. You should watch Long Time No See. It's on Gaga, and Blooming is on the... I, I, how do you say it? I, I call it IQE, Itchy. but that's not it. Itchy, yeah. Itchy, yeah. Something, I think. <laughs> yeah, I always mispronounce it, but those are probably my top three. I did just get teased mercilessly by my husband and my mom because everything is my favorite. They're like, everything is your favorite. And I was like, I know, because you don't have to have a hierarchy of things that you love. You can just love everything. No, and this is true. So I apologize to make it a hierarchy, but I do think that like we were talking about a lot about mess. So I just wanted to give some shout outs to things that like if people were like, look, I just want to see where your tastes are going and what are some things that you love. And this doesn't like the thing I will say is that whenever people have a hard time making these lists, I'm always like, this can be fluid. This can be just for you today. And that list. Yeah. It's definitely me today. But I think that probably love mechanics will always be number one. Oh, I didn't even talk about pie and sky. Well, this but, is, I was, I was like, no love in the air, no Tharn type. My gosh. I just like, I don't even know you. <laughs> it's because I just rewatched Long Time No See and Blooming in the past mm-hmm. week. So they were fresh in my brain. <laughs> yeah. Cause love in the air is going to hold a special part piece in my heart. I think it's in my top three forever just because I don't know. It's like the, key. I think there's other ones that might have like more depth or you know like I think I look at like love in the air in eighth sense and I'm like it's bananas I'd be like love in the air <laughs> but you know what <laughs> there's no good reason it's just like having really good candy yes eighth sense is amazing and like technically and like artistically superior <laughs> and I'm always gonna be there for Pipayu riding his motorcycle in a pointless a pointless race that makes no sense except for the fact that he has to win, be in his feelings so he can go get down. Yeah. And that's all we need. <laughs> but th- that's, I guess, okay, here, here, I'm not just doing this to like derail the conversation. This is also a good point to where a really good drama is going to have, you know, great external conflict, a great internal conflict, and then characters who can just carry the whole thing very well. 
um, like the actors really will matter. Um, so for me, that's where like trapped, I'm not saying that they're bad actors. It's just like, they weren't going to be like my people at least last week. <laughs> um, whereas love in the air, they were my people. Like mm-hmm. I could have probably watched them in candy color paradox or whatever. And I've been like wildly entertained just watching them. In that. Like if I like took the whole plot, just deleted the cast and put them in, I'd probably be like, yeah, heck yeah, I'm watching that. Like if it was Pete Paiu and Rain as like the leads of Candy Color Paradox, I would have been like riveting television. Love this. Right? Like I feel like that could, t- I feel like there's a possibility that could happen. For sure. Yeah. I'm interested to see like if Fort and Pete, the actors who play Pie and Sky and Love in the Air, like if they go on to do other things, if I will feel that way about mm-hmm. their future projects, just because I, I love that couple so much. I love those characters with my whole heart. Um, and I love the actors because I think they did a good job of bringing those characters to life. So I'm interested to see if that similar like if you put them in new roles what will happen even if they're acting together or not I don't know what if they're going to go on and do future shows together they do have according to Instagram they are doing a cameo of some sort in Mame's new BL the wedding planner and there's been little like clips that have been popping up about that drama I think the teaser trailer just came out a couple days ago and we got some images of like a wedding that's happening. So mm-hmm. I'm anxious to see them again. I want, I just want to live in the world with those characters. I love them so much. So I think my favorite pairing still to date is Off Gun. I can't like, not you is in my top top because I love them so much. But Theory of Love is meant to me. But they really, are but they are not meh to me like so I'd say overall theory of love like I'm not going to rush back and watch that but I am grateful it introduced me to them and I really loved them and then I felt like not you came together for me with good internal conflict heavy external conflict that was just wildly weird enough to be entertaining and then I just love their their chemistry together so it hit like all the pieces for me Theory of Love to me in terms of plot, I think I was happy with the characters. Okay, fine. And I loved the actor. The actors carry any quibble I would have had is like muted because I loved the actors so much. Interesting. They have a new one coming out this year. It's a cooking romance. So I mean, they just have a great chemistry that is fun to watch and makes me happy. Mm hmm. I think they just genuinely enjoy like being around each other and like having fun. And that's all I really need in life is for those two people to just be having the best time of their life. And it shows because their dramas are great. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that we've kind of, what we've gotten to in our Met episode today is that, you know, there is some unique personal taste that we bring to everything of what we like or don't like, but that, you know, we've got what the writers can control, which is the internal and external conflicts of the drama. And then we have what the actors show up and bring, which is kind of that like intangible chemistry that, you know, you're either feeling or not feeling as a viewer. Um, Great dramas have all three. And then once we have like one or two of the, you know what I mean? Like, and for me, it goes off the rails if apparently I'm missing I didn't, I guess I didn't realize until this conversation today, how much I need to feel the chemistry of the actors. I always put so much importance on the writing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. To mull on. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be thinking about that and I'll be interested if you jump back in and if it works for you. I will. I'm going to hold off publishing this until I watch it. And then I will make a small addendum that I will add to it to, talk to you directly and tell you how I feel and if I bounce again I will admit that I've bounced again (laughs) and that's okay (laughs) all right well then I'm excited to do another roundup soon but for today we're gonna say strong recommendation from Allison on history three trapped grumpy sunshine at its finest Leah jumped after three episodes but is willing to give it another chance it was not it because it very much could have just been the mood candy color paradox I give it like a, 
you know, let's say you're on the Greyhound and you need something to do. <laughs> it's going to pass the time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good description. It'll get you through, you know, a couple of hours that and you're if just... you need something, sometimes you want something that's not going to emotionally devastate you, right? Like you want something like that's the thing. If you want to have something that's going to be like low investment and not really like grip you or make you stay up all night needing to know what happens next, I feel like that's a good drama for you too. Yeah. Like yeah. you're going to be hating it, watching it mad, but you're just going to be like, okay, it's done. On with my yeah. life. And you know what? There's shows that like, there's times where you just want that. <laughs> I don't know that anybody will ever ask us to sell that drama. (laughs) (laughs) Please give us a pitch for Candy Color Paradox. (laughs) Imagine you've stubbed your toe and it hurts and you want to think about something else, but you also need to go to bed. (laughs) That's when you should watch this drama. That's when you watch Candy Color Paradox. (laughs) Slide it on. <laughs> oh boy. Good times. Oh. All right. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> I am craving candy now, though. Uh, very good. Okay. Well, it was good to talk to you. And uh, yeah, back with more uh, fun BLs in the next couple weeks. Sounds good. Okay. Kamsamnida. Thank you for listening to Afternoon of Delight. Where can you find us outside the pod? Head on over to afternoonadelight.com. That's A F T E R N O O N A D E L I G H T.com. You'll find links to all our social media, our book recs, K pop and K skincare recs. And if you want even more Afternoon of Delight, because really who doesn't, you can join our Patreon, where you can choose the patron level that's right for you. Join in daily K-drama conversations, listen to bonus podcast episodes just for patrons, and participate in our monthly live K-drama support group via Zoom. We can't wait for you to be a part of the community. Until next time, annyeong!